today I'm going to be looking at current sensing. Normally you might be current sensing using something like this, a multimeter, or possibly one of these clamp meters. But there might be times when you don't want to use a multimeter and you actually want to take some measurements in a project using something like an Arduino. Here we have our Mega, our Uno and our Nano. Now how do we actually create a circuit to measure current using these devices so that we can actually manage maybe battery charging or detect overload to a motor or just general power consumption in a circuit. We can do all of those things with an Arduino but we'll have to make an interface somehow. So let's have a little look at some different technologies to actually do that. So let's look at an example circuit. It's going to be a bit difficult because I've got to reach around the tripod here to draw, but let's say we're going to put a battery in this circuit, a car battery possibly, and we're going to run uh, a wire off here to a, say, light bulb, or probably LED would be more modern now, and then we're going to take that light bulb back round all the way over here back to ground. So we created a circuit, the light bulbs are light, very good, but we want to know how much current is this light bulb sinking. Now there's a couple of different ways we can do that. We can either use the clamp meter, which if I bring the clamp back in, we can actually clamp around one of these conductors. Fairly useful, very useful because we don't actually have to cut the cable. We can actually put the clamp around. What this actually does is measures the magnetic field being generated and determines the current flow. Draw the clamp meter on there. Now the clamp meters come in some different options. Most of them are like a trioidal donut type affair that clamp on and then they have some wires that come off and we either need some interface circuit, PCB, or some other method of measuring the small amount of voltage created in this coil and determining the actual current usage. Now quite often the cheapest clamps will only measure AC, they need a changing magnetic field to actually determine this. This mega um, meter here will actually work on DC. You'll generally find the DC clamps are more expensive. Here is an example of a current clamp on the bay. Uh, pick them up for about a quid, as you can see fairly cheap, but this is an AC clamp only. Now the other option is to actually use a shunt resistor in the circuit. This is also quite commonly done, and I'd imagine that quite a lot of multimeters are using a shunt. Uh, and basically what the shunt is, is we add a big resistor in here. That's not the best circuit diagram for a resistor, but we basically break the wires, put it through a big resistor. This big resistor is usually something very low, like you know, 0 0.1 ohms. You don't want to introduce much resistance into the circuit, or we're going to affect how the circuit works. And then what we can actually do is take a tap off here and we take a tap off the front and the voltage read between here and here can actually be used with a bit of Ohm's law V over IR to figure out the current equals amps. Now again very useful, very cheap we can find examples all over the web of using this particular example here's an example we have uh, the big shunt resistor here. It's got to be capable of handling however many amps you're trying to measure, so 50 amps, 100 amps. It will work, I believe, AC and DC, no problem. Again, fairly cheap. They will work in a set range. They might be quite accurate for higher currents, maybe not so accurate for lower currents or vice versa. And the third option I'm going to look at are Hall effect sensors. You may or may not know, as electricity flows around this wire, it actually produces a magnetic field doesn't actually look like this, so this is just an example, so a north and south field around the wire. Now what we can actually do is put a small hall sensor in proximity to the wire, I'll just call it a hall, H-A-A-L, and what the hall sensor does is actually read the magnetic field and then it will actually give us, you'll probably need to provide some voltage to this device as well, and that will give us a varying voltage output depending on the current. Here is a shunt resistor, you can see it's in a big aluminium uh, heat sink and here is our standard resistor. Standard resistor I believe can handle a quarter watt or a half watt. This larger resistor here can handle 50 watts. The problem with using the shunt in this example, your circuit is trying to be energy efficient 
you're actually running an electric heater in the circuit to take the current measurement. So back to the Hall effect, and the Hall effect is just measuring the magnetic field and giving us a voltage reading, which we can then convert into a current reading. The typical examples of Hall sensors that I've come across are these very cheap units, about 99p this particular one. We basically have ground, voltage in, voltage out. There is a track on the board that links underneath this Hall effect chip and the Hall sensor basically produces a voltage out and we get our current reading. Now typically I found that the Hall effect sensors work at a much lower amperage and when you want a higher amperage sensor they generally cost quite a bit more which leads me on to my example that I'm going to investigate today which is this particular Hall effect switch here or sensor that I've purchased. Uh, not seen one of these until recently. I've decided to get hold of this one. Where have I got it from? Well, it's actually flown in from America. This is the particular auction here. It is uh, $15.95. Let's open it up and have a look. So I believe it's a very similar, or if not an exactly the same design or circuit as this smaller sensor, but it makes use of a much bigger onboard sensor. Looks like this sensor has a number on it. I'm just trying to focus in on that. Um, ACS75B maybe? Can't really see it very well through the camera. What does it do? Well it's basically exactly the same as a Hall sensor. We have our current flow in through this leg, flows through the centre of the chip, out through this leg. You can see these legs are quite substantial. Uh, and then we have our three pins here, which I believe is volts in, uh, ground, and a signal out as well. So we provide some power to the chip. We read that magnetic field using a Hall effect sensor and determine the current. So for the next part of this video, I'm going to try this thing out, see how it works. So setup's relatively simple, just solder the three wires to the sensor board. We've got VCC going to go to 3.3 or 5 volts. We've got ground to ground and out is going to go to one of the analog pins on the Arduino. There we go, analog zero. So that's the hookup to the chip. This thing's actually designed to give us a positive and negative current reading, i.e. flowing one direction and flowing the other direction. The way it does that is at zero amps current flow, it gives us a mid voltage on the output pin. So we're driving this thing at five volts. So the midpoint will be 2.5 volts should be read off this output pin when no current is flowing. I'm gonna take a voltage reading from the VCC to check that we've got power up there, yep, 4.9. And then if I go between here and here, yeah, so we've got minus 2.4. It's only minus because I've got the leads around the wrong way. Let's try and get the leads on there the right way. So we've got 2.475 volts. That's pretty close to 2.5. And I think we'll see that the input voltage is slightly under 5. So yeah, we're pretty much exactly halfway between the voltage supply. Next thing I'll need to do is create a little program on here to read the analog pin give us some numerical data and we'll actually visualize the current flow. So with a small bit of coding and a little research from the data sheet, I've managed to get my Arduino fired up. It's able to control this serial board here, this serial LCD display. And what I'm currently doing is just showing the value on A0 and the value is 509. Now the next thing I need to do is actually convert 509 into a current reading. So to do that we look at the data sheet and we can see that this version which is marked at the 200 amp plus and minus version gives us a value of 10 millivolts per amp. So going on that we're going to have to convert 509 
has been of zero point and then 10 millivolts plus is going to be one amp and 10 millivolts minus is going to be the minus amp. To convert this number into amps we need to do some maths. So if our uh, analog pin A0 can go between 0 volts and 5 volts then we need to determine how many steps a volt is. Now the analog can actually read in a number of steps and the number of steps it reads in is 0 to 1, 0 to 3 which is 1024 steps. So we can take 5 volts and we can divide that by 1024. 5 divided by 1024 gives us 0 0.0044 eight volts per step we know that 10 millivolts is going to read one amp so now we just need to figure out the formula to make that work our zero reading is equaling at about 508 509 508 509. Probably a quicker way to do this, but what I think we'd do is uh, take our reading. So take a reading. We'll take the reading minus 508 will equal whatever that is. Then we'll take the question mark value. We uh, times that by the per step value which is going to be 0 0.0048 this could be a negative or a positive number at this stage so plus or negative who knows then we'll take that value we'll call this one B we should probably call that one A and then with B we will divide that number by 10 millivolts and that should equal amps. The LCD connected to the Arduino shows all the variables throughout the calculations. So this is the value of analog input 0 and here is the output displayed in amps. It's uh, a little bit inaccurate. I have the fluke here for comparison and I also have the rear stat connected up. The rear stat is powered by battery and by changing the value of the resistance here I can actually put more current in. So we can see the resolution it jumps there about half a volt. There we go half a volt. We're getting about 0 0.99 amps and we're reading somewhere between 0 0.97 and 1.4. We could introduce some sort of error checking into the program here to actually work out an average or increase accuracy but then we would lose accuracy as we go up to its intended 200 amp measuring range. Let's whack this right up, we'll get close to this meters limit which I believe is 10 amps. Let me have a look here, yep 10 amp fused. 3, 3.9, 4, 5.3, well, nearly 5, 6.3, nearly 6. Theoretically, as we get higher and higher current flow, oh, that's too much current in my meter. Let me go wind that back a bit. So you see it does work. The numbers aren't completely accurate, but it does allow us to estimate the current usage to within 0.5 of an amp. Some good uses for this current sensor here might be for solar arrays where we might want to push up to 200 amps or maybe electric vehicles. One of the ideas I had was to actually use it in an electric scooter design where we could actually regen the voltage off the motor when braking or coming down a hill 
and we could use this sensor to determine which way the current's flowing and thus switch the circuit between a charge and a discharge mode. As far as the code goes, if you want to have a go at this uh, particular project using these exact components, feel free to comment below and I can provide the code for you to get this thing up and running. If you found this video useful, feel free to subscribe, click that like button, comment below and I'll get something up as soon as possible. That's it from me and I can smell burning. Uh, oh, this rear stat is baking hot, passing 6 amps. Um, ow! <laughs>